In the summer of 2018, we wanted a big change, so we flew across to Central Asia to explore the area for a couple of months. Our first stop was Kazakhstan, and we couldn't wait to explore the high mountains surrounding the city of Almaty. We hadn't hiked in high altitudes since the Himalayas, so it was a bit of a shock to our system and much tougher than we expected. One day we picked a really ambitious hike to do up three different summits and we soon realised we weren't going to make it back to the bus in time, so we decided to take a shortcut down the mountain and ended up at this steep gorge with no way down. Fucking hell. It was scorching hot and we'd run out of water and I was getting pretty scared that we weren't going to make it out. We had to backtrack and try a different route, and it was horrible not knowing if it would just lead us to another cliff edge, but eventually we found a section of the gorge where we could slide down on our bums. After wearing ourselves out in the mountains, it was time for us to head to the southwest corner of Kazakhstan and base ourselves in a remote village where we could visit some unique lakes. We managed to get a ride to the lake in a vintage jeep with a bunch of locals, and there ended up being 11 of us inside of it. And to give you an idea of how rough the road there was, it took one hour to drive 10k. Candy Lake was created from a landslide that dammed off the area, water filled up in the valley and it preserved all of the tree stumps that were left inside of it. After 10 days in Kazakhstan, it was time for us to cross the border into Kyrgyzstan and we wanted to do it via one of the remotest borders in the world. We hitchhiked with a couple of cars to reach the border and from there we'd pre-arranged a car to collect us. Craig took a wee in a bush near the border and one of the guards happened to see and they threatened to take our passports and deport us from the country, which was seriously scary. So we were relieved when we finally saw our car driving along the dirt road towards us. Taxi drivers just bought us some fermented mare's milk. <laughs> it was one of the most disgusting drinks we've ever had. We were so excited to finally arrive in Kyrgyzstan and start exploring these dramatic mountains. One of our favourite hikes we did was this one up to Alakol Lake, which is a beautiful blue glacial fed lake with dramatic mountains and glaciers all around it. After we climbed over the pass, the other side looked like Switzerland. There were green pastures and mountains everywhere, and the fields were full of cows. Welcome to Switzerland. I mean, Kyrgyzstan. After 10 hours of hiking, the only thing that kept us going was knowing that we were going to end the day in a hot spring in the tiny yurt village of Alton Arashan. Just by luck, we managed to time our trip for a small nomad festival in Kyrgyzstan, and it was a great way to see all their cultures and traditions in action. We were given a demonstration to show how they use eagles for hunting, but it didn't go to plan, and we were left in absolute shock as we watched this small child accidentally walking across the field and the eagle diverting and attacking her, putting its talons in her back. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. We were given an update on the speakers to say that the girl was okay, but I imagine she was severely traumatised after that experience. Craig and some other tourists got involved in a game of tug of war with the nomads, which of course they lost. <laughs> the day ended with a game of cock borrow, which is known as dead goat polo, and it's Kyrgyzstan's national sport where they sacrifice a goat to play this game. <laughs> Oh, my God.
He's the dog. This is a huge part of Kyrgyzstan's culture and the winning team will dine on the goat so the food isn't wasted. Something we didn't expect to find in Kyrgyzstan was desert scenery, but we found exactly that on the shores of Isikol Lake. Our next hiking trip in Kyrgyzstan was a three-day, two-night trip to Songkol Lake where we'd stay in yurt camps along the way. The route we took was completely off the beaten path and at times we wondered if we were lost, so after 20 kilometers of walking we were relieved to finally see a yurt camp in the distance. The family welcomed us in and we watched them milk the cows and horses which roamed free on the rolling hills surrounding us. The next day we hiked over the pass and managed to find a lovely yurt camp on the shores of the lake where we enjoyed a well needed swim. <laughs> Trying to have lunch here. Oh my god. Help us, Doc. Stop it. Horse riding is really popular in Kyrgyzstan, so we decided it was the place for us to hire a couple of horses to take us up to the remote mountain lake of Kolokok. The yurt camp we arrived at was probably the most authentic one we stayed in. We actually sat down and ate with the whole family, so it wasn't really set up for tourists, it was very traditional. And we had a log fire inside our yurt, which they heated with cow pat. <laughs> Where's our breakfast, eh kids? <laughs> the scenery was spectacular. We had this amazing blue lake on our doorstep and we even managed a two hour hike up into the mountains to a different lake. Craig! After falling in love with Kyrgyzstan, we were pretty sad to leave, but it was time for us to cross the border and head to Tajikistan along the famous Pamir Highway. We were a little concerned about doing this trip though, as just the day before, some tourists were killed on their bikes in some sort of terrorist attack. We decided to go ahead with it anyway, so we had to find a driver and a jeep to take us on this seven day trip through the high mountains. The Pamir Highway is the second highest international road in the world and it climbs to a staggering 4,655 metres. Not only would we have views of mountains over 7,000 metres high, but we drive alongside the Chinese border the Afghan border and even get views of Pakistan. The scenery was quite stark and barren but there were dramatic mountains and some surprisingly beautiful lakes along the way. Each night we'd arrive at a small homestay where we'd spend the evening. This was my favourite part of the trip as we drove through the Wakan Valley with just a gushing river between us and Afghanistan. We had to spend a few days in Dushanbe, the capital of the country, after the exhausting trip along the Pamir Highway. And then it was time for us to head back to the mountains, this time to the Fan Mountains. Mm -hmm. 
it was a stunning and untouched area of Tajikistan that doesn't see many tourists, and it's home to some of the bluest lakes set in a rocky valley. <laughs> Our final stop in Central Asia was Uzbekistan, which was absolutely scorching by the time we arrived there in peak summer. Uzbekistan was a complete contrast to what we'd been used to. Instead of hiking in the mountains, we were walking around cities exploring all the architectural wonders. As pretty as the mosaic buildings were, it wasn't our favourite country. We were fed up with the 40 degree heat to be honest and we missed the mountains. But anyway, we wanted a change so it was time for us to head to Southeast Asia and bask on a beach in Thailand. <laughs> 